morning we're going to begin our series titled and authentic there's nothing like the real thing um, and we're going to be talking in just a minute about the test of authenticity before we go into the message though i want to share some information with you the first thing i want to want you to know is is that there's a way for you to hear the message after the message has been preached if for example while i'm talking you go to sleep <laughs> and you wake up at the end and wonder what has happened you can go right here to Elam's a website, click the discipleship tools, and you'll be able to get right to the message, right? Or you might want, or you might hear something and you say to yourself, boy, I wish Bob was here. Guess what? You can share this with Bob as well. If you think we wish that your mom, your father, your brother, your husband, your, 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 your wife, or your uncle was here, you can take them right there. Guess what? They can listen to the message. Um, after the message has been preached. That's the first thing you want to know. The second thing, if I should say something of any import, something that tickles your fancy, something that makes you say, wow, and you want to tweet about it, or you want to have a Facebook post about it, we're asking that you hashtag authentic ECF. Hashtag authentic ECF. Do you know that the landscape of this world is changing? Amen. Amen. And so we want to give you the permission to be able to use the information and uh, guidelines by which to do it. Amen? Amen. All right. So, so let's go into to the message. Um, now, before I go too deep, i got to tell you why we're going to do this series. Got to give you the why behind the series. Mm -hmm. Most of you, if you've been here for any amount of time, you already know my story. Um, a, a lot about my story because I've shared it over and over. Um, for those of you who have not been with me, I, I'd like to just share a little bit about my story. And, and, and my story that I, that I always go back to is when I was homeless. Over 20 plus years ago, I was a homeless man living on the street. And the reason why I was living on the street and I was homeless is because I had a drug addiction. I was addicted to crack cocaine. And most of you are aware of my park bench experience. And I had a park bench experience where I was really, really, really down on the situation that I was dealing with. I hadn't bathed in several days, and both of the soles of my shoes were half off, and I was sitting on the bench, and I began to weep. I began to cry, and I began to cry out to God, and I promised God, I said, God, if you would get me out of this, if you would get me out of this, I will serve you all of the rest of my life. Most of you are aware of that story, but there, there's a part of the story that you are not aware of. And that part is the part that I want to share with you this morning. That part has to do with the men and women who were a part of my restoration process. You see, there were men and women who believed in me better than the circumstances around me. All right, all right. There were a group of men and women who, who, who had hope for me when I had no hope for myself. Amen. There were a group of men and women who carried me when I was unable to carry myself. And, and what you need to understand about these men and women is that if it had not been for these men and these women, then I could have died in the gut. Forgotten about, lost, like so many other men and women who will die in the gutter. These men and women, I'll never forget them, men like Bishop Bronner, who, who protected me when everybody else was talking about me. Men like Pastor Boyd, who came to the rehabilitation place where I was and began to speak life and vision into my life. Men like Pastor Maxwell, who reached into his pocket and gave me thousands of dollars because he believed in the vision that was in my life. My Women like my wife, who saw a value in me that I didn't even see in myself and encouraged me to go to seminary and get my master's degree. Women like the first female mentor that I had, Stephanie Barber, who, who, who constantly questioned, helped me think through and process the, the, what I wanted to do and the direction I wanted to take in my life. But that's only part of the story. The only part of the why is my story. The other part of the why is your story. 
you see, there are men and women that you know right now or who you're about to meet who will not make it out of what they're trapped in if you and I don't grab a hold of the principles that are going to be shared in this series. Yes. They are not going to make it out. They are going to die in the gutter unless you and I begin to understand what it means to be authentic. This is a critical piece that you and I have to get to. Now, who is this? Who is the message for? I want you to understand that this message is for single men and single women. This message is for married men and married women. Amen. This is for mothers and fathers, stepmothers and fathers, stepchildren. This message is for this message is for aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews. This message is for co-workers. This message is for anybody who wants to have a great relationship. Now, I, I, I'm of the mindset that most of us, all of us, want to have great relationships. Right. Great relationships are important because great relationships, they are the medium through which we receive one of the most vital aspects of human life, and that's called love. It is through relationships that you and I experience love. It is through relationships, right, that, that, that we overcome hardship. Here's something you might want to write down, that great hardships are overcome through great relationships. And so great relationships are important. Great relationships are important because sometimes I need some insight. I need some guidance. I need some instruction. Sometimes I, I don't know the way to go, and I need somebody to talk to who can help me get there. And so great relationships are very important. And so this, is, this, this series is for anybody who wants to be in a great relationship. Hey, listen. Even if you want to have a great relationship with your invisible friend. <laughs> Some of y'all still have no invisible friends. Listen, even if you're in a relationship with an alien, this information is good for you. It's really good for you. Right? Vital information if for anybody, unless, of course, you're somebody who absolutely hates people and you want to live on an island by yourself, you can leave now. <laughs> because this information is not going to help you at all. Now, with that aside, I need to get personal. I look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just knew he was going to get personal. I got to get personal. And I got to ask you a question. Now, 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 the question that I'm going to ask you is, is the single most important question in the relationship equation. There is no other question better than this question that can help us in our development of, the de development of our relationships. This is a critical question. This question will determine, in fact, the quality and the quantity of your relationships. It, 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 it hinges on something so vital, so critical, that it's going to determine the quality of the relationship you have and the number of relationships you have. It hinges on this. Now, now when I ask the question, I, I don't want you to answer in a hurry. Don't try to rush the answer. Now, I'm going to tell you why, because the, 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 the quick answer may not be the right answer. Mm -hmm. you, you need to allow the question to marinate in your spirit for a little while. Let it marinate there. In fact, what I'll do as a favor to you, I'll ask the question in two or three different ways. How about that? That way it'll give you an opportunity to look at the same question from three or four different angles. Right? Now, now, are you ready for the question or would, do you prefer that I just skip this part of the message? You ready for the question? Okay, so here's the question. Um, first part of the question is, um, are you the person, the person you are looking for is looking for? I just want to know, I want to know, are you the person that the person you are looking for is looking for? Or, or, or another way I can say it is, are you the person that you want the other person in the relationship to be? How about that? How about that right there? Okay. Or, or maybe I can ask the question this way. Do you love with the love by which you wish to be loved? It, 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 come on now, I mean, are you, come on now, do you love with the same love by which you wish to be loved? 
Now, the reason why I have to ask this question, see, is because we often have a, 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 an issue. We, we, we hold everybody else to a higher standard than we hold ourselves. You, you follow what I'm saying? See, see, see but like I said, we, we, we want to be forgiven, and we want to be forgiven quickly, but it's hard for us to forgive, and when we do, we do it slowly. I wish I had just one person. Now, we hate it when people lie to us. But we have a justifiable reason for why we lie. Now, I mean, the I lie makes sense, doesn't it? I, I lie had to be a lie because we had a reason to lie. But we are we hate people when they what? Lie to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we walk around talking about, oh, I wish I could find a man with some money. But you are horrible with the money you have. Horrible with the money. You want a man with money, but you're horrible with money. Duh. Yeah, you want your children. We want our children to grow up with the trust and, and faith and confidence in the Lord. But when things don't go our way, we quickly fall apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want the kids. We want the kids to clean up their room. But if you look in our room, so I ask the question again: Are you the person? The person you're looking for is looking for. Are you the person that you want the other person to be? In the relationship, Amen. are you loving with the same love with, with, by which you wish to be loved? Mm -hmm. You, 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 you got to get to answer on this question. Yeah. This question is critical to great relationships. Now, here's what it boils down to, guys. Okay, here's what it boils down to. Um, <clears throat> in order for us to have great relationships, we have to first of all become the best best version of ourselves that we can be. Now, before we have great relationships, we have to, first of all, become the best version of ourselves that we can be. So in other words, you need to work on you. You, you, you get that so far? Okay, everybody nod, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll say amen to myself. You got to be now, now, but there's a catch. There's a catch. Now, now, I have an option of taking this catch and, and putting it into itsy bitsy tiny whiny print where, where, where you can't find it unless there's a crisis situation. Or I can take it and slap it up on the billboard for the whole world to see. And I decided to take this information, this, this catch, and, and put it up on the billboard. Uh, uh, for everyone to to see, um, and here here is the information that you and I need to get, particularly those of us who are Christian. If you're not Christian, this doesn't apply to you. But if you say you're a Christian, here's what you need to understand: that the best version of ourselves is to not be ourselves. So 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 the best, very best that I could be. Is to not be me. Wow. Did anybody get that yet? Yeah. I, the, the very best that you can be is to not be you. Yeah. It is to be like Christ. Yeah. It is to be. Can I get a drum roll? Can I get a drum roll? Can I get a drum roll? <laughs> it is to be authentic. Amen. So I took a little card and I wrote down the definition for authentic. Watch this. I want to read this so I wouldn't get it wrong. Authentic means to be of undisputable origin. To be of undisputable origin. Genuine, not copied or fake. Made to be or look like the original. Made to be or look like, come on now, what? The original. And of course, Christ is the original. Now, 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 herein lies the issue, Tiff. Here's the issue about um, authenticity. Whenever there is an issue or question about whether or not something is authentic, it has to go through a process of authentication. And they begin to test to see if this thing that says that it's what it says it is, it's really what it says it is. And let me give you an example. 
Um, if you were to take a painting, for example, and you were to tell me that this painting was the original authentic painting, then a, a group of experts, I'd get a group of experts to come in, and these experts, they will begin to examine the painting. Now, the first thing they would do is look at the history of the author's work. Wow. They would try to find out what the author has done throughout the author's life. Then they would look at the painting itself and look at the pentenas on the on the on the painting. The pententa is the the great the green foam that forms on the on the surface of the of the canvas as it's exposed to time. And they'll look at it, and begin to measure to determine how long that canvas has been exposed to air. And and then they'll look at the front of the canvas and the back of the. They'll look at the author's signature. They'll look at the brush strokes and all of that stuff. And after doing all of that they will determine whether or not the painting is a fake or if it's original. Mm. Now, and to the, here's what we got to understand. There are a lot of phonies running around. There's a lot of fake folk claiming to be something that they are not. And, uh, and, and so, and so, and so, instead of you and I arguing with them on whether or not they are in fact authentic, we need to take them to the scripture and do a test God, to determine the authenticity of the person's life. Do you see that so far? All right, so, which brings me to our feature text. Isn't that wonderful? Oh my Isn't that wonderful? It brings me to the preacher text. Now, let me set the atmosphere for you um, on this feature text. Um, I gotta set the atmosphere. Uh, if you could pull up for me um, the fifth chapter of Galatians before we read the sixth. I want to share with you what Paul did. See, the first thing Paul did was he drew a contrast. Like, like, you know, in order for you to really understand the brilliance of a diamond. Right? You gotta take that diamond and put it on something that is black in order for you to see the contrast and the concepts of the diamond and its cuts, you see. So, so, so what Paul does is he draws a contrast in the fifth chapter so that it would help us with the sixth chapter. And and and, and I'm gonna run through real quickly this sixth, this fifth chapter. If she can pull that up for me. And um, on, on the 16th chapter, here's, here's the fifth uh, chapter, 16th verse. I'm going to run through it quickly, and I want to, I want to, I want to, I'm going to use a little creative imagination, a little pastoral imagination, y'all. Have to bear with me. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to vibe right now. So listen, bear with me. All right, he says. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your what? Life. Then you won't be doing what you want to do. <laughs> that, that's all that says right there. That's all I said. Keep going. Keep going. So you won't do what you're supposed to do because what you want to do is evil. All right? Which is, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants to do. And, and the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what we want to do. All right? But these two forces are constantly fighting each other so that we're not free to carry out our what? Good intentions. You might want to write this down some, at some point during the course of your time with me. You might want to write this down. Direction, not intention, determines destination. You'll get that later. Direction, not intention, determines destination. You'll get that later. Watch this. So he says, so that we cannot carry out our good intention. Go ahead. Watch this. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Go ahead. He says, when you follow the desires of yourself, the results are very clear. Very now, when you follow you, this is what you are going to do. You are going to be sexually moral and pure. You're going to have lustful pleasures. This is what you're going to do. You're going to be idolaters. You're going to be sorcerers. You're going to be hostile. You're going to quarrel. You're going to be jealous. You're going to have outbursts. You're going to be angry. You're going to be selfish. And you're going to be dissension. And division is going to be there because that's how you want to live. Go. Right you're going to be envious, you're going to be drunken, you're going to be wild. Oh my God, I hate to see what's going to happen in the Super Bowl. We're going to be wild at the park. We're going to be sinning like, we're going to have sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, 
that anyone living that sort of life will not what? Go on. He says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kind, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Come on now, come on. Gentleness and self-control. This, there is no, what, law against these. Go on. But those who belong to Christ, who have nailed their passions and desires of their lustful, took, they actually have nailed themselves to the cross and crucified them there. Uh-huh. What happens? Since they've been living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our what? Life. Verse 26. Let us not become what? Or provoke one another or of one another. You see that right there? All right. Now, so he sets that up. That's the background to this passage. And his purpose is, I want you to know how you were. So you need to know how you are. Now let me test to see if Christ really has had an effect on you. And the only way that you and I can be tested to see if Christ has really had an effect on us is in our relationships. See, the relationships we have are the tests of authenticity. And if, in fact, the Holy Spirit is in you. In other words, if you are filled by the Spirit and you are led by the Spirit, then you are authentic. And your authentication is going to be, be demonstrated in how you relate to one another. Is anybody getting it yet? So here it is. So let me. So so here's what I'm doing. I'm laying the groundwork for the rest of our series. Um, I, I'm not going to go into depth in each one of these tests. Next week we'll start on test one. But today I just want to share the test with you. How about that? Yeah, see, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. All right, so, so here it is. Look at the passage there, and he has some good information that will help us understand how the test goes down. Okay, Lee, let's see what the tests are. All right, here it is right here. Galatians 6, verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, if anyone, if another believer is overcome by sin, by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And watch this. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. So here's what you want to write down. On your, on your outline, you want to write this down. See, here's, here's how you know whether or not um, um, a person who calls themselves Christian is really authentic. If they lead the vulnerable to victory. You know that you know that they are authentic when they lead the vulnerable to victory. Amen. Come on now, the, the ones who are exposed, the, the ones, the ones, the ones who have messed up, right. the, the ones that everybody knows their business. You know, the ones that that we normally chuckle about, the ones that we talk about behind us, the ones that we be little, the ones that we gossip about. You know which ones I'm talking about. Come on, he said that you, if you're authentic, you will lead the vulnerable to victory. Right? They understand that they're vulnerable. But their goal is to cover them in their vulnerability. I remember coming off uh, out of my addiction after having been in a uh, men's, uh, men's, uh, men's uh, ministry for a year and coming back to the church and, and, and Bishop seeing the change in me, and he began to use me, and he sent me here to preach, and sent me there to preach, and all of the other people, look at them, and they were eating and shopping at the bit, everywhere I went, I just can't believe you, what is he doing, and Bishop covered me, he continued to cut, leave him alone, come on, leave, and every time, and every time they talk bad about me, matter of fact, he got to the place where he said he's gonna preach on Sunday morning. Oh, I wish I had somebody to understand. He, he was able to lead the vulnerable to victory. If you're authentic, you lead the vulnerable to victory. He goes on, he goes on, he goes on. He says, he says something. He says, watch this. He says, share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. 
If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Amen. You ain't that busy, baby. Your business ain't all of that. You can't come in here and help mom. Pay careful attention to your own work, and then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. You want to write this down? The other test is, are they, are they burden bearers and heavy load sharers? See, 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 the authentic are burden bearers and heavy load sharers. You see, when they see you in a situation or a problem, they don't make your situation worse. Have you ever had somebody, come on now, you're in a bad situation, and when they show up, instead of making the situation better, they make the situation worse. They stop telling you all the stuff you shouldn't have did, and you shouldn't have went over here. Like, you don't know you made a mistake. Like you don't know you were wrong. Like you don't know that this wasn't the way to go. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden now they get a revelation and they need to tell you that you're wrong. Right. But instead of making things worse, they come to make things better. Thank you. Now watch this. You gotta get this, especially some of you, some of you brothers and sisters got a problem with this. You don't take the problem as your own. You share in the problem. Come on, bro. Yes. First thing you can do is take somebody's problem and make it your own problem. The next thing you know, you'll be more concerned about the problem than them. Yeah. And then you'll be the one staying up at night and they'll be asleep. <laughs> Just one person. They are burden bearers and having no share. Like, like, watch this. Like, I'm not going to come up and say, no, I got this, brother. I'm going to say, no, you get that part. Uh -huh. Come on, and I'll get this part. But you're going to carry a part. <laughs> That's number two is that in there, burden bearers and heavy load chaps. Yeah. And then it says, yeah, watch this. Then he says, those who are taught the word of God should provide for those, for their teacher, sharing all good things with them. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest, you will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from that Spirit. Watch this. The other thing you'll notice about the authentic is that they give their best. They give their best so that others can be blessed. Amen. They give their best so that others can be blessed. They don't have a jealousy thing going on. Yeah. They're not mad because you're doing well. In fact, they try to find a way to make you do well. Yeah. I'm making stuff up as I go along here. Y'all bear with me, right? Well, well learned and well less. Right? You gotta make a word sometimes. They, but they, but they, they are so appreciative of what you've done for them that they look for ways to keep you encouraged. They look for ways to keep you strong. They keep looking for ways to help you go on. Because watch this. They recognize that they got to give their best so that others can be blessed. Hallelujah. Give the best others. Give the best others. And then finally, watch this. I'm wrapping it up. Watch this. This is critical. This part here is critical. He says, watch this. So, let's not get what? Tired of doing what is good. Amen. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't what? Give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those who are part of your Christian fellowship. <laughs> I read that part. I just read that part in there. <laughs> Stack that with this. I just did that. <laughs> but, but watch. Here, here it is. Watch. Oh, this is good. Watch this. Watch this, Jay. You're going to love this. See, if they're authentic, they keep it 100. <laughs> See, if they're authentic, they keep it 100. Like, they don't back up because you back it up. 
Like they don't stop because you stop. Like come on, come on. Like they, they don't turn into a devil because you turned into one. They keep it 100. They keep pursuing. They keep trying. They keep trying to help. They keep trying to encourage. They keep trying to build up. They keep on coming. They keep on coming. They come on. I wish I had somebody. And the best model of that that we have is God. Because when God, come on, when you and I backed up on God, he stepped up on us. God always keeps it 100. You don't get sick and tired. It don't get on your nerves. See, because let me help you with something. You start having people, they're going to start getting on your nerves. And you want them to, you want them to move faster. You want them to grow quicker. You want them to get there sooner. Watch this now. And so when they don't get there, you start getting weak and weary. No, no, baby, if you're authentic, you'll learn how to keep it 100. That's what the Bible says. Is that what it says in the Bible? Yeah. Keep it 100. That's what it says. <laughs> See, Paul, 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 Paul wasn't cool like that, right? So Paul, Paul said, don't get weary. Don't get weary. So I had to translate it in modern day vernacular. Keep it 100. <laughs> so, so, okay. So, did I read all of it? Did I read all of it? Did I read all of it? Okay, yeah, I was especially to those who are in the in the in, in Christian fellowship. That's it right there. Right? Okay. So let me give you some next steps. I gotta give you a next step because because um, we gotta you know part of the challenge of listening to a word from God is that it shouldn't just give you information. It should cause you to go into action. And if it doesn't go into action, then it was just entertainment for you. So, so what would be your next step? Here's what I want you to do throughout the next week, this week, this week, this next seven days. As the Holy Spirit deals with you, I want you to, as you deal with your relationships, I want you to ask him this question. Am I the person that you want me to be with this person that I'm in relationship with? Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, am I the person you want me to be for this person that's in front of me? Right? You need to ask him that. And then the second thing you and I need to do, I would encourage you, sit down this week and write a letter. I know it's old-fashioned. I know you'd rather do email texts quicker. But I want you to write an old-fashioned letter with paper and a pen. If you want to know what a pen is, I think I have a few models around here somewhere. And I want you to mail this letter to a person in your life that has been there for you when you were different, going through a difficult time. And I want you to tell that person what their help has meant to you. I want you to sit down and I want you to remember and I want you to write down what they've done, why it's been so important, and mail that letter to that individual in the mail with the slow mail. <laughs> this week, stamps, I don't even know how much they cost. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But buy you a stamp, you know, and lick it, put it on the paper. You don't have to lick it. You ain't got to lick them anymore. You ain't got to lick them. You ain't got to lick them anymore. I used to like to lick them too, but I had a little taste for them. Listen to me. I want you to imagine what this church would look like if we all were really authentic. I bet you there wouldn't be room on your pew if we were all authentic. I bet you there would be zero divorces in this congregation if we were all authentic. I bet you all, 
more of our children would stay with Christ when they went to college than the ones that leave if I and you were more authentic. I bet you that, I bet you we can create a situation where there would be a line of people waiting to get in this little bitty building if you and I were authentic. I bet you you would improve the relationship that you have with your brother that you've been estranged to and if, if you just would be authentic. That cousin that you don't like, that uncle that gets on your nerve, all of the people who are in your family that you have this disdain for, it's possible that you and I could win them to Christ if we would just be authentic. This is the moment this is the time. And so, prayerfully, you'll come back again. And the next time you're together with me, I'll walk through the first test in great detail. And we'll walk it all the way through. And then, prayerfully, on the other end of this series, we can answer that question that I asked you earlier. Are you the person, the person that you're looking for, is looking for? Are you the person you want the other person in your relationship to be? Are you loving with the same love by which you wish to be loved? We can say, proudly we can say, yes. Father, I thank you. Thank you for this word. A word that nourished my soul. That, that changed me. A, a word, God, that showed me my weakness in areas. And showed me where I'm struggling.